Okay, guys, I hope you hear me well. Uh, let's uh, start this uh, webinar. My name is Damian from forexbolt.com and I am very happy to be here uh, with you today. So, um, I will ask you to type in the chat if you're able to hear me now. I'll be grateful if you give me an indication that I'm not by myself over here. So, if you're able to, to hear me properly, uh, feel free to share this with me and to just to type in like, uh, like yeah, we can hear you, Damien. Okay, no indication for now. Okay, we have, yeah, all right. We have a couple of guys here uh, reply to me. Uh, hello, Ole Kohom. I apologize if I don't pronounce your name the right way. Um, and the other guy is Kok Seung Nyu. And I apologize again if I don't pronounce your name the right way. So now I'm going to turn on my camera so you'll be able to see me and to say hi to you. And yeah, I believe you can see me now. All right. All right, guys. Uh, I'm interested. Where are you guys from? I'm uh, by myself. I'm from uh, Bulgaria, and I'm currently located in uh, in Sofia, which is the capital of Bulgaria. And um, yeah, I was wondering where are you guys from too. For example, Ole, where are you from? Okay, we have a guy from Malaysia, Denmark. Very good. Florida, USA. All right, we're pretty much like uh, around the whole globe, which is like. Uh, the purpose of uh, this web. All right, Minnesota over here. Yeah, we're pretty much an international team. That's a good thing. Very, very good team. So before I start introducing myself, uh, I offer that we wait like and chat like for a couple or three more minutes uh, until the other guys uh, manage to join uh, our webinar. Currently, we're not like. Uh, like uh, nine, ten people, so more people will join uh, pretty soon. It's gonna be an interesting topic today, and uh, I hope you will like my first webinar for Forex Both. By the way, and we have a guy from Canada as well. I see over here. That's good. So Canada, U.S., Denmark, Malaysia and me from Bulgaria pretty much pretty much all over the world which is a good thing and uh, which is why we work so hard on Forex Ball to make the team international and engaging and interactive so it, it's it's good when you see that uh, your reports have result all right good thing good thing currently here is like uh, around 20 degrees Celsius, which, uh, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm not very sure how much of this in, in Fahrenheit, but I assume it's something like uh, maybe 80, uh, which is considered a pretty, pretty warm day for, for like uh, the end of March, since like a couple days ago, the spring came on calendar over here. Uh, but yeah, that's like a normal thing for the weather to get warmer and warmer every single year so we're getting used to it like 20 <laughs> years ago we used to have a lot of snow here every winter like a uh, couple meters snow people were barely walking like like a small Siberia <laughs> yeah good thing good thing over here all right let me All right, guys, so I suggest that we start now. So what I'm going to say about me is that I'm, uh, I'm 26 years old. I'm located in, in uh, Bulgaria, Sofia, otherwise originally I'm from Varna. My name is Damian. My last name is Diamandiev. And um, for the past five years, I've been intensively engaged. I've been intensively engaged with financial market. 
as a trader, market analyst, like mentor for other people. I've been, I've created like uh, thousands of pages written material, educational content in the area of forex trading and stock trading, more um, like involved in technical analysis. And otherwise, by my education, I graduated from uh, in business administration with an emphasis in general management from City University of Seattle uh, in the U.S. state of Washington, and uh, and um, I took my master program in the International University of Monaco. I uh, took a master in international management over there. And I also got like six month professional internship over here, over there. Uh, it was very nice experience. In the meantime, I was constantly working with financial markets, uh, always following the currencies and stuff, being involved every day with uh, forex pairs and trading, price action, technical analysis, which is uh, like going to be the topic of our current webinar. So, what else can I tell you about me? Um, I'm happily related to a girl. Her name is Rosica. She's my girlfriend. We live happy over here in Sofia. She is my, um, you know, spiritual supporter for every my initiative, including this webinar. Uh, what else? We live with a cat and a dog. We're a very, very happy house and a very happy family. So, what I suggest you now to do is to switch with our topic for the day. As, I, as you probably saw today, we're going to examine the Elliott Wave Theory and the Elliott Waves, and we're going to discuss what this theory is about and how you can apply it uh, to Forex trading. So you're able to see uh, our uh, our logo now, uh, which is the home screen of my presentation. So I'm going to switch to the next slide, which uh, reminds that uh, this presentation and this webinar has a fully educational purpose, and uh, you should use it only with educational purpose, and you should not solely base your trading strategy to uh, what you're seeing in this presentation. So the Elliott Wave Theory. First, I'm going to ask you guys if someone of you is familiar by any way with Elliott Wave's theory. I will be happy if you ping me with a single yes or no, or yeah, I know some stuff, or yes, I know it all, or no, I know nothing at all. <laughs> so we can, we can see how things are going over here. Nope, nada. All right, Mark, I'm happy to announce you that you're going to learn a lot of stuff about the Elliott Waves. I see that Kok Seong Lu, sorry if I pronounced this uh, wrong, um, is, uh, uh, you know, it's a, a bit familiar with Elliott Waves theory. Ole is briefly familiar with Elliott Waves theory. So that's a good, it's a good thing if you have basis. And even if you don't have basis, this is why I'm here for. So I'll be able to bring it to you. So I'm going to turn off my camera now. I'm going to take that pretty face away from you and we're going to continue with the serious stuff of this presentation. Okay guys, okay I turned off my camera now. You're probably not seeing me anymore. So let me introduce you to our plan for the day. So today, first we're going to go through what is the Elliott Wave Theory and uh, what is it about, how it applies to Forex trading and to price action, uh, how it applies to trend lines and to, to identifying tendencies on the chart. Uh, then we're going to go to the structure of every single Elliott Wave, uh, including uh, the trend waves and the reversal waves of the Elliott Wave theory, uh, because the Elliott Wave, Elliott Waves uh, are, they consist of two types, the trend waves and the reversal waves. So we're going to go through the five trend waves and the three waves that form the reversal or the potential 
retracement. After we finish introducing the structure of the trend waves and the reversal waves and the overall general structure of the Elliott waves and the Elliott wave, Elliott wave theory, we're going to switch to some practical examples on a starter, standard MetaTrader chart like this. And uh, then what we're going to do is to switch to how to apply all this knowledge to trading where I'm going to um, introduce your potential entry points of the Elliott waves, where you should enter the market, where to place your stop loss order and how to manage your risk uh, when trading Elliott waves. And the six points we'll move on is to the price target because as you all know, <laughs> It is like a pointless to trade without having a certain target on the chart. Uh, you should always plan your trading and should know for how long you should stay in every trade and your minimum potential in every trade. And then after we discuss the price targets and the entry points, we're going to switch again to uh, yes, Ole. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Uh, I would like to answer. Yes, uh, we are. We will record the webinar and we will upload it at Forex Vault, so it will be available uh, for everyone uh, of our members. It will be available online. So after we discuss the six points about price targets and exit points when trading Elliott waves, we will switch to again to practical examples, the dark chart, which I already showed you, and we will. Um, briefly go through, we'll try to identify new Elliott waves of past price action move and I will show you for example where to enter the market, where to exit the market, what kind of signals you can use uh, in order to account some profit when trading with Elliott waves. So now let's switch to our first slide, our first point uh, in this presentation which is uh, the Elliott wave theory. So, the Elliott wave theory suggests that every trend is uh, potentially having a strict scope, meaning that uh, the trend could be like uh, uh, identified with single waves, which are like trending waves and correction waves, and then uh, you can suggest where the end of the trend is and where a potential reversal could start on the chart. The Elliott wave theory suggests the beginning of the trend. Also, it suggests uh, the number of the waves, as I already said. And also, the most important thing, the size of the trend impulses and the size of the trend corrections. So, when trading with Elliott waves and when you learn how to identify Elliott waves uh, on the price action chart, you will pretty much have an idea where a price impulse or a trend correction uh, could finish, which is how actually traders profit from when trading with Elliott Waves. Uh, when you learn how to identify the trend, the Elliott Wave theory will also help you identify the end of the trend and the beginning of the potential reversal. Notice that I've placed in braces uh, the word retracement because after all, when a trend gets interrupted, uh, this doesn't mean that the price is starting a reversal. This could on, only be a retracement which can go to a like certain percentage of the previous to the certain percentage of the previous trend, which is something uh, which Elliott wave theory takes into consideration. And after this retracement, you know, uh, further opportunities could be like appearing on the chart, like a fresh new emerging trend, etc. etc. But this is something which does not concern us since we're interested in the trend and in the reversal of the trend or the potential reversal which is a retracement. Also the Elliott wave theory help us identify potential number of the reversal impulses and also the size of each of these impulses <clears throat> and the total size of the reversal correction. So now let's proceed with the presentation. I'm going to meet you with the structure of the Elliott waves. As I said, the theory suggests that every trend consists of five waves, which are three waves in the direction of the, of the trend and two waves, which are corrective waves. So we have one, two, three, four, five. First wave is an impulse, second wave, correction, third wave, impulse, 
uh, fourth wave correction and fifth wave impulse. If we refer to a bullish trend, you know, ascending trend where the price is going upward, we say that uh, the first wave creates a top, the second wave creates a correction, the third wave creates a higher top, the fourth wave creates correction, and the fifth wave creates a higher top than all of the waves. Uh, then the Elliott wave theory suggests that after the fifth wave, uh, the price action starts a reversal, which consists of three waves. Two impulses, which are contrary to the previous trend, meaning that if the general trend was bullish, the two waves will be bearish, and one correction between the two bearish waves, which is in the direction of, uh, of the previous trend. But I am 100% sure that this got you totally confused. <laughs> so don't worry about this because, because I have a very nice and handy image for you, which explains it all. Uh, and also, I would like to interrupt the presentation for a second. Do not hesitate to ask me if you have a question of any, any, any kind. I'm ready to answer everything, if I can, of course. And I will be more than happy to answer a, a question of yours. So, I hope you're seeing the the current sketch now. You're seeing the sketch, right? Just type a single yes or yeah, Damien, we can see the sketch. Or yeah, it's very pretty. How do you do this? I will be happy if you if you ping me and if you alert me that uh, you're currently seeing the sketch. Or okay. All I said that the sketch is visible, meaning that probably all of you are seeing the sketch. That's a good thing. Okay, as I said, every trend, the Elliott wave theory. All right, all the guys see the sketch. That's good. That's a good thing. So, as I said, the Elliott, Elliott wave theory suggests that every trend consists potentially of five waves. First wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave. As you see, I've marked every single of these waves uh, with a nice and neat number over here, so you'll be able to identify it. Also, I have uh, colored the waves. Uh, the trend waves in green and the reversal correction waves with red, which is like a, an association <laughs> you can do with a price increase and price decrease, green and red. So, the first wave, the second wave, the third wave, the fourth wave, and the fifth wave. Notice that the first, the third, and the fifth waves are trend impulses, while the second and the fourth are trend corrections. At the same time, the sixth wave is marked with the letter A, and it is the wave which is likely to finish the trend, to interrupt the trend. So the sixth wave usually breaks the previous trend line, which you see with the blue color over here. So the A wave, the sixth wave, is usually the breakout wave. Notice that this is not 100% necessarily the, the A wave to be a breakout wave. It can sometimes hit the trend and then the next correction could be like a smaller one uh, in the scope of the trend and the C wave might be the one which breaks the trend. But the original Elliott wave theory suggests that the A wave is the one that breaks the trend. Then comes the B wave which is a correction of the breakout. The A wave is bearish, the B wave is bullish and it is likely to bring the price action to the already broken test line, uh, trend line in order to test it as a resistance, meaning from the upper side. See that the blue trend line was acting as a support between at the beginning of the first wave, between wave 2 and 3, and between wave 4 and 5. Uh, then the breakout wave brought the price action below the trend line and the B wave the B wave brought the price action to the already broken trend line to turn it into a resistance. So the Elliott wave theory is a very pure example how a support level trend could be turned into a resistance when the price changes directions. After the B wave the price is likely to bounce from the area of the trend, creating the C wave, which is another sharp 
reversal wave, and it is the last of the eight Elliott waves. So now let's switch to the next slide. Here I am explaining the Elliott waves in details, and I am explaining you about their like uh, potential scope on the chart. So the first wave starts the trend. And notice that this could be any impulse or any tick on the chart. Yeah, this could be any impulse or any tick on the chart. So every price move might evolve into Elliott waves. Like, because every price move could be the beginning and could be the first wave on the chart. So, so the first wave, actually, it is not confirming the presence of the pattern. It is just suggesting that the pattern might emerge on the chart. Then comes the second wave. The second wave is contrary to the emerging trend, meaning that if the first wave is a bullish impulse, the second wave is likely to be bearish. And also, it can take either 50, 61, or 61.8% 61 of the first wave. This wave, the second wave, acts as a confirmation of the trend and the Elliott wave theory. But it will act as a confirmation only if it meets one of the two requirements. To reach 50% of the previous trend or 61.8% of the first wave. 50% of the first wave or 61.8% of the first wave. If the price action reaches, like the second wave reaches 50% or 61.8% of the second wave, and then changes direction, creating a new fresh bullish impulse, for example, wave 3. This confirms the presence of the pattern, and this is where we can trade. But we will go to this point a little bit later. Then comes the third wave, which is also likely to be in the direction of the trend. It is another impulse, uh, supporting the trend on the chart, and it is likely to reach uh, uh, I will have your attention over here, 161.8% or 261.8% of the second wave, meaning that the third wave is an extension of the second wave, which means that the price is likely uh, to break the top of the, of the first wave, the top between the first and the second wave, and to create a fresh new high on the chart when it concerns a bullish trend. When it concerns a bearish trend, everything uh, works in the opposite direction upside down. So if the price reaches 161.8% or 261.8% extension of the wave 2, then there is a great chance that a fourth wave begins on the chart, another correction of the trend. This correction is again uh, similar to the second wave, goes in the opposite direction to the trade, to the trend in bearish direction, and it is likely to take 38.2%, 50%, or 61.8% of the third wave on the chart. The third wave, which was the previous one, and then when the price reaches one of these three levels, 38.2, 50%, or 61.8 of wave 3, it is also likely to meet the trend line and to bounce from the trend line again, shooting in bullish direction if it, if it concerns a bullish trend. So this bounce after the creation of wave 4 is likely to lead to the fifth wave, which is the last trend impulse according to the Elliott wave theory. This impulse is likely to be either as big as, uh, as the previous wave on the chart, meaning that the price will not create a higher top on the chart. It is either going to be 100% of the wave 4 or 161.8% of wave 4. So when the fifth wave is finishing, it is very likely that it will be the same height as the previous trend impulse on the chart, uh, creating a second top on the chart. Or it can also be bigger, going to 161.8 extension of wave 4. And since this is also very confusing, I have another sketch for you. After this slide, which we're going to explain you all the percentages in details. So don't worry about this. Don't get scared by numbers. 
personally, I like numbers a lot, which you see with the time. But uh, in this case, I've visualized everything for you, so you'll see it in the next slide, and you'll be able to to answer to a lot of questions which you're probably asking yourself. So after the fifth wave is created, as I said, the price is likely to start wave A, which is contrary to the trend, and it usually breaks the trend line. This wave is likely to be either 50%, 61.0%, 100% or 161.8% of wave 5, which was the last impulse of the trend. After the creation of wave A, we have wave B, which is opposite to wave A in the direction of the trend. However, the trend is already broken, so it is not a trending wave. It is more likely a correction of potential emerging reversal or retracement. And wave B is likely to bring the price action to the already broken trend line and to make the price action test the area around the already broken uh, trend line. Wave B could reach 50%, 61.8% of wave A, the breakout wave. Then, after the price bounces from the area of the already broken trend, we are likely to see the last wave of the Elliott wave theory, which is wave C, it is another reversal impulse, which could take 100 or 161.8% of wave B. So now let's switch to the visual, to the visual guide to the Elliott waves theory, which will, which will answer a lot of questions of yours. Here it is. We have the same sketch, but all the percentages are applied. So I'm going to quickly go through each of these levels over here and. Uh, if you have some questions, please do not hesitate to ask at any time. I'll be more than happy to answer if you, if you have something to ask. So, what is the sketch telling us? It shows us the five trending waves. One, two, three, four, five. And the three reversal waves, A, B, C. Notice that there is nothing related to the first wave because, as I said, this could be any impulse on the chart, right? So, when the first wave emerges, we're likely to see some kind of a reversal at some point, which is the beginning of the second wave. The second wave then is likely to take 50% or 61.8% of the first wave. I bet you're wondering how to measure the percentage of the waves. I will show you when we switch to the visual chart and when we discover Elliott waves. This happens with a simple Fibonacci retracement indicator. You simply stretch it, stretch it on the wave which you are taking for a basis and you see how, what percentage is the next wave taking of the base. So the second wave reaches 50 or 61.8% of wave 1. Then we see the beginning of wave 3 which takes, which is bigger than the previous stop and reaches 161.8% or 261.8% of the second wave and goes above the second wave, the beginning of the second wave. Then we see the emergence of the fourth wave, another correction which leads the price action to the trend and which takes 38.2% of the third wave, 50% or 61.8% of the third wave. Then the price is likely to bounce from the trend again reaching either 100% of wave 4, meaning that it will go nearly at the same top between wave 3 and wave 4, or it can also go above this top and could reach 161.8% of the fourth wave on the chart. After the fifth wave is completed, comes the breakout wave, which is, which is also called wave A and I have marked it with A, as you see. This wave is likely to go lower than the bottom created between wave 4 and wave 5. Usually it goes lower, but sometimes it can go like, uh, not lower, but it could be the same size, as you see, 100% over here of wave 4, or it can even be half of wave 5, meaning that the price might even stay inside the scope of the trade. So, when the price eventually breaks the trend line, we have 50%, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.8, 61.
100% or 161.8% of the fifth wave on the chart. When wave A is finished, we're likely to see wave B, which will bring the price action to the area of the already broken trend, taking 50% or 61.8% of the previous wave A. Then the price is likely to bounce from the already broken trend line, the area around the trend line, creating another bearish impulse on the chart, which could either be as big as the bottom, as the previous wave, indicating the bottom between A and B, or it can go lower to 161.8% of wave B. So these are all the waves involved in the Elliott wave theory. So now let's do some practical examples. But before that, I would like to ask you if you have any questions related to the waves which I already mentioned, uh, because I, I want to make sure that you are all like, um, like um, keeping the pace which I'm currently holding when conducting this webinar. And I would like to be sure that you will, you know, you will be like, uh, you will understand what we're currently going to, to look at the chart. So if you have any questions, I will, uh, I will, I will, I would love to answer to your questions. So feel free to speak up your mind and to ask me about anything. I will be more than happy to answer. And if you don't have any questions, I will simply switch to the presentation, uh, not to the presentation, but to the trading chart, which I'm going to use. Okay, we're now going, Ted, we're now going to see the, the practical examples. Don't worry about this. Uh, wh why are you worried about the practical examples, by the way? What is it that concerns you? Is it something like related to the percentages of the Elliott wave theory or, or you are like uh, afraid that you're not going to be able to recognize the, the waves on the chart? What is it about? I, I assure you that it, it, is, uh, it is pretty simple, so don't worry about it. Okay, now I'm going to bring my... Yeah, absolutely. It is like it is not easy to identify the Elliott waves on the chart, but I mean it is uh, it is like uh, it Elliott waves could always give you like a visual basis of how long the trend could potentially last. Yeah, it is not easy, but I mean it is not that it, that hard to learn as well. So I'm going to show this to you right now, and in order to demonstrate you that it is not that scary, <laughs> I will ask you to name a forex pair of your choice now, whichever forex pair you want, Euro dollar, uh, Euro, Jap uh, American dollar, Japanese yen, British pound dollar, American dollar, Swiss franc, Australian dollar, American dollar, whatever you want, and I will simply browse the chart and I will show you like an example of uh, the Elliott wave theory without, you know, having any preparation because I mean, you're free to name every chart you want because I'm able to open it and visualize it instantly. So feel free to speak a chart, whichever Forex pair you say. For example, Ted, if you have a suggestion for me, I would love to open a chart of your choice and uh, to draw some waves for you guys. <coughs> Cable, all right, let's do this. British pound, American dollar, also known as the cable. Oh, we have your Japanese yen over here. All right, we'll start with cable since uh, Isaac was the first one who named it. Then we'll go to the euro Japanese dollar. Let's see if I have this one over here. No, I don't. Yeah, I have it over here, so everything's fine. All right, let's do the cable chart and try to identify something like five waves trending and five waves which are contrary to the trend. Hmm, now I'm browsing the chart, trying to find something. Hmm. Looking at some trends over here. Uh, 
and I'm pretty sure that soon I will discover something on the cable chart. If I don't, I'll simply switch to another chart to show you another example. To another time frame, I mean I will keep the cable, <laughs> of course, since I believe I'm going to find. Hey, what is this over here? Let's zoom out. You guys see this? One, two, three, four, five. And then we have one, two, three. What do you think about that? Do you think that this will work? Let's try it. The first thing I see here, a little discrepancy with the second wave on the chart. But we're going to measure every single wave one by one to see what's going on on the chart. Okay, notice that I've stretched the Fibonacci indicator. Let me show you how to use the Fibonacci indicator, by the way, because probably some of you might not know. So you simply, if you're using a MetaTrader 4 platform, you simply click it right over here at the top of your menu. It's like uh, some horizontal lines with an, with an F letter on them. So when you select the tool, you see a cursor, and then you should select the beginning of a trend or an impulse and the end of that impulse over here. And when you select that trend, you will see horizontal levels appearing through the chart, which I'm going to make thicker because I assume you might, you might not seeing them. Here you go. Now it might be better to see the levels. OK. And now that we have stretched the Fibonacci indicator on the first potential impulse on the chart, we see that if this is wave one over here, which I'm going to mark with like with like a text label. Here is one. One. If this is the first wave over here, the second wave takes almost fifty percent of the first wave, which is pretty much close enough to what we're looking for. But if this not pers uh, persuades you uh, enough, I will now switch to the next wave to show you how the price action is actually forming these waves over here. Okay. All right, let's say that this is the second wave that takes that takes 50% uh, of the first wave. Now let's stretch the Fibonacci indicator. Place, let's place it on the second wave. Right over here. Notice that the second wave is relatively small due to its uh, uh, compared to the first and the second wave. And this is the reason why the third wave over here, which I'm going to mark for you on the chart now, the third wave goes to 261, and it even goes slightly above 261. But this is a normal thing. After all, we're looking for the price action to, to after all, we need to see the price action during the minimum price move to, to the 261.8 level. So don't worry if the price goes slightly above. It is normal and you will see that the next waves you actually will actually match. Hey, Ted has said something over here. Uh, chosen different smaller reversal at say 14 March. Uh, Ted, I don't understand your question. I, I would love if you, if, you, if you paraphrase this for me or something. Until then, I'm going to continue. And now when we put the Fibonacci indicator at the third wave, we see that the fourth wave matches exactly with the requirements of the Elliott wave theory. See that the price goes to 61.8 Fibonacci level, and then it shoots up to create the fifth wave. 
And this is a regular, uh, like, uh, it's a regular event when working with Elliott Wave. Some of the waves will not match exactly with the, you know, the correct percentages because nothing is 100% sure in Forex trading. But other waves, like, for example, the fourth wave we're currently seeing, is giving us like uh, the perfect visual basis of how uh, of how long should the fourth wave of the Elliott wave theory be. See that the price goes to the to the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement, which is like the percentage of the third wave, and then it shoots up to create the fifth wave. Let's now check the size of this wave over there. Okay, let me see. Are you guys still in there? Yeah, now I understand your uh, question. So Ted asks me why why did I decide to choose the first wave like like the first wave to be the basis of my uh, Elliott wave indicator. So the Elliott wave, ever, uh, I mean the first Elliott wave is likely to start with a price move which is remarkably big compared to, uh, compared to the other moves on the chart. So notice that, uh, notice that the first move which I chose to be a first move uh, comes after, uh, breaks a high first of all over here breaks a top, here it is, and at the same time it creates something like a small trend inside. Let me see if I can be able to, okay. At the same time the price creates like a, like a small little trend inside which confirms the, well, that this could be a potential mover impulse on the chart. But as I told you, the confirmation of the Elliott wave pattern does not come with the first wave. It comes with the second or the third wave. So currently we're choosing this because I'm, I'm seeing that the price is like uh, creating five impulses on the chart. And as I said, every tick could be used uh, as a part of your Elliott wave theory. For example, notice that the first wave, which you're asking about, it has small ticks inside. One, two, three, four, five. Reversal. When we move to the next wave, we see again one, two, three, four, five. Reversal. So in every impulse, you will be very likely to see uh, to see a smaller Elliott wave pattern, which will like build the theory uh, internally. I hope I managed to answer uh, your question at some point, Ted. But uh, yes, as I said, every, every impulse on the chart could be the first wave. Don't look for the confirmation of the Elliott wave pattern in the first wave. Look for the confirmation after the third wave, after the second wave, or after the third wave. Okay, I'm happy that I managed to answer your question. After the creation of the fourth wave, which I marked with four over here, you probably see it. Uh, I'm afraid that you might probably see these numbers pretty small, so I'm going to make them big for you. I hope this will be better now. So you will be able to... Here it is. Okay. All right. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to mark the separate waves for you as well. First wave. Second wave, third wave, fourth wave, and now I'm building the fifth wave over here. As you see, the fifth wave, when we place the Fibonacci indicator at the fifth wave, it, it goes in the area of the 161.8% level of wave four, and then the price shoots down creating the next wave on the chart. So now I'm going to mark the fifth wave for you. Five. Here it is. The fifth wave. Now I'm going to 
remove for loops. Hey, God, I know how to use Control Z. Okay, I remove the Fibonacci indicator, and I'm going to build something like a regular trend on the chart. Show mark with pink, for example. And here it is. First wave, second wave, third, fourth, fifth wave. Then comes wave A. In our case, wave A is not breaking the trend, which is a normal event. And it takes 50% of the fifth wave, which is something that totally matches the requirements of the Elliott wave theory. See that the next wave takes 50% and reaches the trend line. In this case, the breakout does not appear, but then the breakout comes with the next wave, which is something like usual. Okay. So now I'm going to mark this wave for you, which is A. All right, let's check the next wave. How big is that, huh? Okay, when we place the Fibonacci indicator on the wave A, we see that wave B takes exactly 61.8% of wave A, which also matches the requirements of the Elliott wave theory. B, marking this one with B, wave A, wave B, and now when we place the Fibonacci indicator at the wave B, we see the last Elliott wave on the chart, which is likely to reach either 100% of wave B or can even go lower to 161.8 or even further as in our case. But uh, in this case, you should pursue a minimum of 100 or 161.8%. In this case, the price goes lower, but hey, if you are short over here, this is even better for you. So it actually doesn't matter how long is the last wave, the C wave, as long as, uh, as long as the price meets the minimum requirements of the theory. So we have another question for Mark. Any way to make the numbers of the Fibonacci indicator bigger? I will try to do this for you. Fibo properties, common parameters, visual. No, I'm afraid not. I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, what I will try to do for you is to is to simply point the exact levels. For example, the level that concerns us is over here, 161.8. Over here, I'm currently pointing it out. And this is the 100 level over here. Okay, so the price reaches the required minimum in this case. Now I'm going to mark this with C for you. C. Okay, so we have five waves in the direction of the trend, which I'm not sure why, why I drew with orange. I had to, I have to draw them with with green, it's like a better, better think, better to visualize them. Okay. So this is what you will be seeing when you're looking for the Elliott waves. You will see five waves in the direction of the trend, and then three more waves that are reversal waves. Here it is, nice and clean. Sometimes the A wave 
will break the trend and will bring the B top from the lower side of your trend line. But sometimes not. When we remove the trend line, this is the clean pattern which you will be seeing. First wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, interruption of the trade, trend with wave A, then wave B, and wave C. Uh, the, as I said, the first impulse on the chart is uh, likely to do something extraordinary, like in our case it did a resistance breakout at 149.70, yeah, 73 or 76, whatever, and the price started ticking, uh, started ticking upward. But uh, when you're looking for Elliott waves, you should be looking for waves that are approximately bigger. So uh, I'm, I'm saying this for, oh, we have another question. Uh, currently, we're on the H4 chart. The Elliott waves could be found actually on any chart, but I recommend you that you use a bit bigger chart to discover Elliott waves because after all, behind technical analysis and the Elliott wave theory as well, there are um, like psychological factor which uh, pushes the trader to create turning points in their decisions based on the Fibonacci levels used in the Elliott waves uh, theory. In this relation, bigger charts are more likely to visualize like a, like a proper um, proper sign of the traders and the investor psychology since it neglects smaller text. And this is why I believe bigger charts are better to use uh, the Elliott wave pattern indicator. So since we discussed an example, I will switch back to the presentation to discuss some more details about uh, the Elliott wave theory and show you where to buy, where to sell, how to open close trades, and et cetera, et cetera. All right, so which waves we should trade? In my opinion, the most profitable waves are wave 3, wave 5, and wave C. This is because wave 3 and wave 5 are waves that, comes after the, that come after the confirmation of the pattern and also that are in the direction of the trend. And when you're trending, trading in the direction of the trend, you are likely to catch bigger price moves that are likely to last for a relatively short period of time compared to the move that the price is making. After all, there is a well-known saying in Forex trading which states that the trend is your friend. And I suggest that you stick to this, uh, to, to this saying if you are not very experienced trader. If you are a more experienced trader, then you can also trade wave 4 and wave B, which are corrections corrections of the trend. I mean wave 4 is correction that comes between wave 3 and wave 5 and wave B is correction of the breakout. If this confuses you, I will show it to you in the next slide. I don't suggest you trade wave 1, wave 2 and wave A. Why is that? Because wave A, it has absolutely no meaning in this wave. It could be any price move on the chart. So if you see a single tick on the chart, you cannot identify the pattern by any wave. Also, you cannot identify the pattern with the beginning of the second wave. You need to see the second wave completed in order to identify the pattern. And how are you going to trade something which is not completed here, right? You need to see it completed in order to say, hey, this is the pattern present on the chart and I can hop for wave 3. Like I said, the most profitable waves are 3, 5, C. Wave A, this is a very, very tricky wave. It comes after the fifth wave, and in some cases it can break the trend, and also it can stay on the trend line. As we saw in our case over here, the fifth wave did not break the trend. You see? So, for example, imagine that you're hopping for this wave and you expect it to break the trend. But in our case, it did not break the trend, it bounced, and it created wave B. This might confuse you, and this might lead you in a loss which you, which you, which you don't need, of course. Why, you know, why risking our capital in risky trades? That's no point. It's better to, it's better to trade the things which are like, uh, which give us higher probability and a higher chance for success. 
And this is why I don't suggest that you trade wave the first wave, the second wave, and wave eight. Now I'm going to visualize this for you. First, we start with the third, the fourth, uh, the third, the fifth, and the C waves, which I suggest that you trade that are more profitable. And if you're not that experienced, you should aim for these waves. So when you see, when you identify the potential first wave, and when you see the price creating the second wave, wait until the price action creates a bounce. If this bounce comes in the area of 50% of the first wave or in the area of 61.8% of the first wave, then buy after the price creates a little bounce in bullish direction. After all, this bounce will give you an idea that the price is actually following this pattern maybe, right? And gives us a, a bigger chance to hop in a trade when the third wave is emerging on the chart. The same is enforced for the fifth wave. After the price conforms to the 50% or 61.8% of wave one, the third wave will give you another idea about the Fibonacci level on the chart, which is 161.8 or 261.8. And then the fourth level, if it goes around 38.2% or 50%, or 61.8% of wave three, then if you identify a bounce in this area that matches with the trend line, then you can buy for wave five. The sixth, uh, the C wave, you should sell when the price either bounces from the already broken trend, conforming to 50% or 61.8% of uh, of wave A, or in like in our case over here, if the price is above the trend line and we don't have a breakout yet, over here, we don't have the breakout yet. We only conform to the Fibonacci level, which is still sufficient reason to believe that the price is reversed. After all, we only had like one level which was not like matching exactly. <laughs> the percentages on the chart, but as I said, nothing is 100% sure in Forex trading. Here it is. It goes 261 point above the 261.8%. The third wave is a little bit bigger. So this can create some kind of, a, you know, questions in your head. Hey, is this a real pattern? But then when you see the fourth wave, the fifth wave, and the A wave, and the B wave, which are actually matching almost exactly with the Fibonacci level, you can uh, you see that the price action matches here with the 61.8% of wave A, and when the bounce is created on the chart, here it is. When the bounce is created on the chart from the 61.8 Fibonacci level, you can pretty much short the British pound American dollar forex pair, and to help him for a decent and nice bearish move on the chart. And this is how you trade the, the third, the fifth, and the C wave. Now let's get back to the presentation. Do you feel you're more experienced? If you feel you're more experienced and you can trade trend corrections, then you can hop for three, uh, for two more waves. This is wave four. <coughs> Apologize. This is wave four and wave B. So wait the development of wave three. If you see that the price action conforms to the 161.8% or 261.8% of the second wave, and you see a turning point on the chart, something like a bounce in various direction, you can sell and try to trade until the price reaches the bullish trend line. Same is enforced with wave B. Since wave A is expected to be big, wait until the price move of wave A reaches 50%, 61.8%, 100% or 161.8% of wave 5. And if you see a turning point on the chart, then you might hope for a price increase for wave B. I see another question over here. Uh,
Yes, I will um, uh, Kok Siung Nyu, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, uh, is asking uh, 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 if I'm going to cover this into the entry point session. Yes, exactly, I will. And I will show you on a real chart, for example, where to enter and to exit trade. So don't worry, I'm, I'm not going to leave you only with this black sketch over here. We're going to open the chart again. And we're going to do the Euro Japanese Yen uh, in a while, um, as uh, one of you preferred. And I will show you in a better way how to enter the trades, how to uh, determine your target on the chart, and how to place your stop loss order. Okay, now let's switch to the next slide. Here they are, the waves which I told you not to trade. The first, the second, and the A wave. If you are a beginner, trade wave 3, wave 5, and wave C. These are all trend impulses. The trend is your friend. Stay with your trend. Don't risk with correction. If you're a more experienced trader and you believe you're a more experienced trader, you can try wave 4 and wave B. But don't expect to make profits as big as from wave 3, wave 5, and wave C. Stop loss order. How to position your stop loss orders when you're trading Elliott waves? That's a good question. So, a lot of traders will tell you to put your stop loss order tight below your entry point. For example, if you are buying on wave 3, they will tell you to put the stop loss order below the bottom created between waves 2 and waves 3. I don't like this approach personally. What I will suggest you is to put the stop loss order below the previous bottom on the chart. So for example, you want to trade the third wave over here, simply buy when the price bounces and place your stop loss order below the previous wave on the chart, over here. Not over here, but over here, down below the first wave, I believe this is the better and the safer approach when trading Elliott waves. So this is why I'm going to mark this with red. Okay. Okay. You're trading the third wave. Place the stop loss order lower. The price action is volatile. It can simply, you know, create a big tick. Hit your tiny stop loss order over here if you have it over here, and you're going to be left with a losing trade. You want to avoid this. Simply put the stop loss order looser. After all, if, if you have a stop loss order uh, in your trade, it is not necessarily that the stop loss order gets hit. If you see that the price action is not doing what you're expecting, don't wait for the stop loss order to be hit. For example, if you see that the price is going lower and lower and it breaks the trend line, simply close the trade. There is no point to stay in the trade until the stop loss order is hit. The point of the stop loss order is to protect you from volatile price moves, meaning that you want to avoid big price ticks like, uh, let me show you an example of a big price tick which, which you want to avoid. There you go. You want to avoid this. <laughs> Look, it is very big. And it is probably caused by uh, some kind of a big economic event. Or here, take a look at these candles. Toof, toof. Relatively big. You want to avoid this. Yeah, this is why the stop loss order is slightly looser, so it can protect you from such volatile events on the chart. So place it a bit lower, below the previous bottom on the chart. Or for example, if you're trading wave C, don't place it over here, but place it like um, place it above the top created between 5 and 8 over here. This way you'll be more protected. All right. Price targets and exit points. If you're trading an impulse, which were wave 3, wave 5, and wave C, wave 3, wave 5, and wave C, here they are. 
If you are trading on impulse, wave 3, wave 5, or wave C, you should stay for a minimum price move to the first retracement from the Elliott wave theory. What does this mean? As I said, every wave on the chart is expected to reach a certain uh, one of few levels. Not a certain level, but one of, for example, wave 3 is expected to reach either 161.8 or 261.8 of wave 2, which I'm going to show you right now. Here it is. Wave 3 is expected to reach either 161.8 or 261.8 of wave 2. So, your minimum target in this case should be 161.8 of wave 2. If the price reaches this level, you can either close the whole trade, or you can close half of the trade, or you can stay in the trade without touching the trade if you see, if you see that the price action has no intentions to stop the impulse move. In this case, you will simply hold the trade and aim for the bigger wave on the chart, like it did in our case. Notice that wave 3 not even reached 161.8 and 261.8 and it even went above this level, which is, which is like impressive. See that after wave 1 was reached, after uh, the 161 point level was reached over here, the price created a little corrective impulse, which might be a signal to exit the trade, which is it reached the minimum. And you can exit the trade over here, but then the price shoots up and increases to the 261.8 Fibonacci level on the chart. Okay. Let's get back to our slides. Okay, so if you're trading the third wave, you should stay for 100 for a minimum price move. I say minimum again, not on necessarily to bid this, but this should be your minimum target. 161.8% of wave 2. If you're trading wave 5, you should stay at least to the 100% of wave 4. And if you are trading the wave C, you should stay for at least 100% of wave B. If you see the if you see that the price shows no intentions to interrupt the move, meaning that the trend continues, there is no point to stay only for the minimum price move. You should, you can simply keep the trade and trade until the price action reaches the next levels stated in the Elliott wave theory. So if you're trading wave three, the second target will be at 261.8 of wave two. If you're trading wave 5, the second target will be located at 161.8% of wave 4. If you're trading wave C, the second target will be located at 161.8% of Elliott wave B. So if you're an experienced trader, you can, you can also hit for the corrections. You can try trade the corrections. And if you're trading the corrections, which are wave 4 and wave B, you should stay in the trade until at least until the price action interacts with the trend line again. And this interaction should also be conformed to some of the Elliott waves levels stated in the theory. So, for example, if you're trading wave 4, how long will, will wave 4 go for? Right? Measure wave 3 and see which of the levels matches with the trend line. 38.2, 50% or 61.8%. Which one of these levels will the price action reach? Simply check out with the trend line. For example, you want to trade wave 4 and you short the price action, for example, uh, Uh, just give me a second so I will make a, a visual indication for you. Down arrow, arrow properties. Not sure if you're able to see it. Let's say you short for the fourth wave over here. You should clearly trade to the trend line. See that the price meets 
the trend at 61.8% of the third wave. So your target is clearly defined on the chart. Why stay further when you see that the trend matches with the 61.8% Fibonacci level? Or why exit the trade in the 38.2% when you see that the trend line is clearly lower and we expect the price to interact with the trend line, right? Hey Isaac is asking if the video is going to be available online for all. Yeah, the video will be available in the database of the uh, Forex Vault network. So don't worry about it. You'll be able to see it online and you can watch it uh, uh, many, as many times you want. So don't worry about it. The video will be over there. So do your stuff and don't worry about this. The video will be online. And also if you have other questions, uh, we will be happy to answer you in Facebook or whatever. So don't worry about this. So let's keep going. We saw that the wave 4 went to the 61.8% of wave 3 and at the same time this level interacts with the trend. This is your target. The target is clearly stated and there is no doubt that this is the right place for your target on the chart. Why exit at 38.2 or 50% when this level is not matching with the trend? Check out which level is matching with the trend and stay in the trade until the price reaches this level. If you are trading a correction wave, here it is. If you are trading wave B, the other corrective wave, which of the two levels will match with the trend being tested from the opposite side? In our case, we did not have a test of the trend from the opposite side since the price action was located above. But what we can do is to stretch the Elliott Wave Indicator and to see that the price action is creating a turning point at the 61.8 Fibonacci level. How about the 50 Fibonacci level? Is the price creating a turning point over there? No, it simply goes through it sharply and reaches 61.8. This is the turning point. This is for how long you should stay if you trade Wave B. Okay, let's zoom out this chart now. Again, we have the waves. Let's get back to the presentation. All right, switching to the next slide. Now, let's do some practical examples about everything I just told you. I remember that one of you guys uh, asked if we can approach the Euro Japanese yen chart. Here it is over here. I cleaned all the indicators I have so you will be able to see it uh, nice and clean. <laughs> this is an interesting thing. The current chart of the Euro Japanese Yen is showing like five waves. One, two, three, four, five. Could this be a potential Elliott wave pattern? And is the price action going to reverse? What do you think? And this is how the bearish version of the indicator looks like. So I'm going to do a quick measurement to see if, to check if this is the exact pattern on the chart. Okay, trying with the first wave, second wave reaches 61.8. Good for now. Then, we go over here, 161.8. And then we check with this wave, 61.8, everything looks fine, okay. And this should be the fifth wave. Uh, should be measured from over here. No, <laughs> I, I messed up the directions, I'm sorry. Okay, let's do it again. First, second. Okay, we measure this wave and we see that the price goes to the 161. Yeah, in my opinion, the current 4-hour chart of the Euro Japanese Yen shows an emerging Elliott wave pattern, which is currently ready with the waves, but not with the correction. So I'm going to I'm going to build my lines over here with green. 
which is like a little bit thicker. Okay, the first wave, the second wave, the third wave, the fourth wave, and currently the fifth wave is emerging. Now I'm going to label all of them for you. First wave. Second wave. Third wave. And this is like the fourth wave over here. and the fifth wave. Here they are, five affiliate waves. And now, let's measure again. We take, since the pattern is currently bearish and we're approaching a bearish trend, we do it from the opposite side. So we take the beginning of the first impulse and the end of the first impulse. What do you see? 61.0% which means that the second wave takes 61.0% of the first wave. This is the confirmation of your pattern. When you see, when you see the price reaches, reaching the 61.8% of the first wave, you can short the Euro Japanese M4 pair after the creation of this candle, which is a bounce from the trade. You can short um, over here, I hope you're able to see this. Short over here after the creation of the of this candle over here that confirms a bounce from the 61.8 level. Then when you do this, you should place a stop loss order. Over here. And then you should trade for a minimum price move until the price action reaches the, the 161.8 extension right over here. I will zoom in so we have a better picture about it. Take a look at the move which I'm taking. You take this move and you see that the third wave goes until 161.8, which should be your exit point in this case, meaning that you should close your trade over here. When the price interacts with the 161.8 level, this is why I place this check mark over here. If you want to trade the correction, which is wave 4, you should be very careful. See that the price is bouncing from 161.8, showing no intentions to reach the next target at 261.8, meaning that the wave is probably finished. This is why you close the trade, you collect your profit, and if you're willing to trade the other wave, you do it this way. So the first thing you need to do is to confirm the bounce from the 161.8 level. We see that the price is bouncing over here. We see that the price is bouncing, but to confirm the bounce, we would need to see a candle closing above interrupting the pattern, meaning that if you want to trade the correction, you will need to buy the Euro Japanese M4 pair over here, right over here, and you should trade for a very small price move. This is why I don't recommend you, if you're not experienced enough, there is no point trading these moves. 
corrective moves. If you feel that you're strong and you're experienced, try to trade them. But as you see, in this case, we cashed a nice and big price hole. And in the case of wave four, we're going to catch only this, which is like worse than this move over here. But anyway, if you're trading the wave 4, you should buy the market over here. You should place your stop loss order below the level created. Somewhere over here, below the bottom, which was indicated by the 161.8 Fibonacci level. And then you should close the trade until the price action reaches the trend line. And then when the price bounces from that trend, you can trade the nice thing, the nice and the sweet thing, wave 5. Wave 3 and wave 5 are always expected to be big. In this case, when we place the Fibonacci levels when on wave 5, taking wave 4 for a base, here they are, we realize that the price, the price breaks the 100 Fibonacci level, which is the first target, and see that the price shows no intention to stop breaking the level, which is an indication that you can hit for the second target at 161.8. See, this is a bearish candle, another bearish candle, another bearish candle, fourth, fifth, sixth over here. But the bad thing in this case, is that the confirmation, the bounce of the trend, happens with a very big candle, which means that we need to enter the market relatively late, somewhere over here. So when you sell for the fifth wave, should short over here, placing a stop loss order above the previous stop on the chart. Notice that I'm not taking the top created between wave 4 and 5. I'm taking the previous top because I would like to be sure that the stop loss order will not be hit uh, due to some kind of a volatile price move. Let's zoom out the chart. And then you should exit the trade. You can always exit the trade on the 100 level, which is like the minimum target in this case. But why do so when the price creates a big bearish candle, another bearish candle, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and absolutely no intention to stop the bearish move. This is a clear sign that you need to hold the trade for the second target. As you see, the price action reaches the second target, which is the reason I'm going to put the check mark over here. The check mark that indicates that the trade will be successful. So, we shorted the market over here after the bounce. We shorted the market over here and we traded the move over here, which I'm going to show you now with an area. Here it is. Nice and big price decrease. Bearish candle after a bearish candle. This is what is sweet about these trades. When you catch a proper trade, uh, a proper trend, you will definitely be awarded for your patience. Okay, I'm gonna mark the potential trades I suggested here with uh, with some bright color. You'll be able to see. This was the first trade I suggested. Uh, actually, this was not the first trade. This was the first trade I suggested. I apologize for this. Uh, this was the first trade I suggested over here. The second trade I suggested, but I don't recommend because it's a corrective price move, is this one. Very small. Very, very small. Over here. And the third trade I suggested is another big mover. 
over here. And this is how the Elliott Wave trading should go with you. Uh, I'm going to mark the stop loss over, over order over here because I forgot to put it for you. Here it is. So the red areas are the stop loss orders you should use uh, when you're trading this trade. For example, when you trade the third wave, this wave, your stop should be over here. Over here. When you're trading the fourth wave, if you are willing to trade it, your stop loss order should go below the Fibonacci level you're taking for a basis. If you're trading the fifth wave, the stop loss goes above the previous stop on the chart, which is the top between two and three. All over here. So we have three trades, the first trade, the second trade, and the fifth trade. And this is on a pattern which is currently now, currently, month of March, emerging on the Euro Japanese Yen chart. And notice that this is only the trend. These are the trending moves, meaning that the price action might even continue with the decrease with increasing and breaking its current trend. So I will now create something like a projection for you, something that might happen on the chart. If we continue working as stated in the Elliott wave theory, we can expect something like this to happen on the chart. So, in case the price breaks the trend in bullish direction, this might create a decent opportunity on the chart to trade potentially for wave B and wave C. As I told you, I don't recommend you to trade wave A. I don't like wave A because it can either break the trend or it can bounce and continue the trend. You never know. It's a risky wave. Wave B and Wave C. Over here. And if the trend gets broken by Wave A, the price can return to the trend, turn it into a support and bounce for Wave C. And we have another question over here. Okay, a couple of questions. Let me have a look. So, for how long does an Elliott wave trade last? It depends. It depends on the chart you're using. For example, we're currently using a four-hour chart, which means that the trade might last a few days. It might last one day. It might last 24 hours, for example, like uh, in this case over here. One, two, three four, five, six candles, six four-hour candles, which is which uh, six times four makes 24 hours. This is a 24-hour trade, one day. But for example, this trade over here, it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It took 44 hours, which is like pretty much two days. And, and the fourth, the trade of the fourth wave took like, um, like less than 10 hours. But if you're trading on a daily chart, for example, a bigger pattern, um, the, the, the trades uh, might last up to up to a couple weeks, maybe. Or they can be conducted in a single week or in a few days. It depends how sharp the price action is increasing. But uh, remember, if you're increasing the chart, the time frame, expect uh, longer trades in terms of time. Jay asked if a recording is going to be available. Uh, I think I already answered to this. Uh, yeah, yeah, the recording of the webinar will be available, so don't worry about it. Webinar will be live for you on our website, so you will be able to see it whenever you want. Don't worry about that. My uh, kind co-worker Martin is currently making a recording of the webinar, so everything will be all set for you. So, yeah, what we can do for in the future week, for example, is to follow how the Euro Japanese Yen chart will develop. Will the wave A be created on the chart? Will this break the trend? 
will we see a return to the trend and will we see the emergence of wave C? Because this could be like a very, very pleasant trading opportunity on the chart. So I hope I explained, I managed to explain myself because I know that the Elliott wave theory can be confusing sometimes. And since I know that you're probably confused, uh, feel free to ask me whatever questions you want. I will try to answer all of your questions. Do not hesitate to ask whatever you want. I will do my best to respond to anyone. This was pretty much the uh, this was pretty much uh, everything I have to share with you about the Elliott Wave Theory, so don't worry about this, guys. Feel free to ask your questions at any time. Let's see who is going to be the first one who's going to ask something. Come on, guys, show some passion. No, I thank you for participating, Mahmoud. I thank you. Thank you for being my guest over here. I will return the presentation to the sketch with the level, so this will give you like a visual basis to ask your questions. Feel free to ask your questions now. I'm ready to respond to all of you. And until you ask me something, I can, for example, remind some of the stuff related with the theory. Uh, so, our here ask which is the best time to use the Elliott Wave theory. Uh, as I said, I believe that the Elliott Wave pattern could appear on any chart, but it is like uh, more reliable on bigger charts in my opinion, since uh, I take into consideration the psychological factor which traders, investors and big, uh, uh, for example, central banks and uh, liquidity providers, etc., take into consideration uh, when conducting their deals. So I believe bigger time frames are like the more reliable to trade Helios waves on. So this is like the four hour chart, the daily chart, even the monthly chart, sometimes the hourly chart, why not? I think this is okay. Uh, Ted asks if the four-hour chart is a good chart uh, is a good chart uh, for conducting Elliott wave trades uh, because, for example, it might not be better maybe to holding trades for many days. This uh, strongly depends on what kind of a trader you are. If you are um, a scalp trader, for example, who holds the trades only for uh, less than a day, who conducts the days intraday or uh, if you're a swing trader who holds his trades from few weeks to one month, for example, or if you're a position trader who holds his trades from a couple months to even a whole year. I mean, uh, the Elliott Wave pattern could be applied successfully to all of the three kinds. I mean, you can hold an Elliott Wave trade for one day, you can hold it for one week, for one month, or even for one year if you're a position trader who stays uh, in his trades up to one or two years. But, uh, for example, it is more likely to get a trade that last few days rather than one day. Because a one-day Elliott Wave trade means that you're trading a smaller time frame, which on the other hand means that uh, the pattern might not be that reliable and that successful. I hope this answers your question, Ted. I have another question from Cox Sung New. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the, the name wrong. Your videos posted on Facebook usually trade on five minute chart. Do you prefer scalping? Um, uh, about if I prefer scalping, it's not that I prefer scalping. I like uh, either scalping or swing trading. Uh, I also like position trading, but honestly, I haven't hold it personally a trade for one year or two years. Uh, I'm doing scalp trades in Facebook cock because uh, scalp trades take less time and it is easy for me to shoot it. If I create a trade on, on the four hour chart, it might go up to one month and uh, I mean if I try to shoot a video for one month and at the end the trade appears to be like a, <laughs> like a fail, <laughs> uh, it would not make sense to spend one month on a 10 minutes video that at the end it, it's going to be a fail. That's why I try to, to demonstrate patterns on smaller charts so I'll be able to create a trade intraday 
and we'll be able to shoot it and to provide it for you on Facebook and on our website. Yeah, Ted, exactly. It depends on what kind of trader you are. But again, I repeat that uh, a one-day Ilya trade is like, for me, it's like a rare event. I don't, I don't prefer trading, a, holding an Ilya trade for one day. As I said, this means that you're probably trading a small chart. For example, are you going to look for an Elliott wave pattern on a one-minute chart? I don't think this is reliable. Maybe it's better to look at the one-hour chart or four-hour chart where your trade might last for like, um, on the one-hour chart, the trade might last a couple of days on, or three days. On the four-hour chart, it might, again, last two, three days or might go up to one week. You never know. It depends. But in the example I gave you here, the first trade lasts like a couple days, the second trade lasts like 24 hours, and only uh, the third trade lasts like 24 hours, only the second trade lasts like 8 hours, but it was like only a couple of candles, and as I said, I don't recommend you this trade since the whole correction was conducted only in these three candles, where only two of them are tradable, and the second one is extremely small. Let's check the British Pound. Uh, American dollar example I gave you. So how long did the trades take to develop? For example, if you've traded here in this case, let me show you. Okay. Let's say you're buying here after the price bounce. This trade will go like from 12 o'clock on 21st, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it goes for one week, this one. If you try to trade uh, the corrective move of wave 4 over here, this will go like for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 days. And if you trade wave 5, this one will go for like from 6th. To 14th, which is like eight days, one week. If you trade wave four, over uh, wave C, I apologize. If you're trading wave C, it will last for something like from 20 seconds to second on the next month, which is like uh, 11 days. Pretty long. I mean, not pretty long, depending on the big price move. It's a decent period of time to wait to get this big move over here. Okay, guys, feel free to ask me more questions if you have something more to say. Don't worry about it. If you would like to ask me something more, I will be happy to answer. If you don't have any more questions, uh, then maybe I will see you on the next webinar, but let's wait a bit more. We're 16 people currently. All right, guys, no question anymore. So thank you very much for watching and for being part of my first webinar on uh, the first webinar which I conduct for ForexBoat.com. Thank you very much for your participation and for your patience because this webinar took like a relatively long period of time. We're currently like an hour and 40 minutes. I hope that I was useful for you. I hope that you understood the Elliott Wave Theory. If you have any questions, feel free to participate in the Facebook group. I'm there, I'm constantly following the Facebook group, so if you have questions of any kind, do not hesitate. Oh, thank you very much, Ole, I appreciate, I appreciate your recognition. Do not hesitate to ask your questions in Facebook or wherever, or contact us through the Forex Bolt page. Uh, I'll be there to answer you. you. You will see me more and more involved with the Forex Bolt project with the time, and I hope that I'm able to produce value for you. Thank you very much again for watching my webinar, guys. I wish you a great uh, trading day. I wish you a lot of pips in your wallet. I hope that you do good with the Elliott Waves theory and you account for big profits. And I will see you on the next webinar, which I'm still not sure when it's going to be conducted, but we're going to let you know. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to post another trading video on Facebook, so stay tuned. Wishing you a good trading day. And happy trading, guys. Bye-bye.